It's roughly half a year that you now joined Mont Blanc as uh, head of watchmaking. Um, how is it? It's a very interesting and exciting adventure. Um, I took over the role of uh, managing director of the newly created uh, business unit of watches, which is now based uh, in Switzerland between Le Locle and uh, Villeray. And it's a very interesting challenge and way of integrating the two manufacturers because uh, um, we have been taking uh, some of the core competencies in terms of movement development from Le Locle and moved here in Villeray to create uh, an excellent center of movement development that now serves the whole uh, Maison. And uh, we have been taking everything which was uh, quality control and moved it to um, Le Locle uh, to sit the 500 hour test which uh, certifies uh, the reliability and quality of all our high-end watches. The most important for this year is the Axel Tourbillon Slim, which is quite an affordable uh, tourbillon in a gold case uh, with a beautiful guillage dial. The Axel Tourbillon itself is, is not a normal tourbillon on one hand. It has some, some additional properties that make it very interesting actually. Can you tell us more about that? Absolutely. The Exotourbillon Slim is the achievement of a three-year uh, uh, plan uh, to launch and present this year at CHH uh, this new caliber. is a, a perfect uh, um, example of the application of uh, uh, the, the position and the strategy brought by Jerome Lambert, which is sharing passion for fine watchmaking which really means taking all the competencies uh, which sits here uh, inside the company, especially in Villare, uh, and bringing them to nurture and to enhance the technical content of all the rest of the collection. So this is uh, a, a very good example, the Exotor Beyond Slim, because uh, it comes uh, as a patent from here, exactly the, the place where we are sitting, where the concept of exotourbillon has been developed and this concept is based on the fact of uh, uh, taking the balance wheel out of the cage of the tourbillon uh, which gives a lot of interesting uh, advantages. Uh, the first one is uh, the fact that uh, uh, the cage uh, can be smaller so it, uh, it's going to use less energy. You're talking about the tourbillon cage. Yeah, Every exactly. Every tourbillon is inside a cage which rotates. Exactly. With this uh, particular patent we took out the balance wheel from the cage. Mm -hmm. uh, the two are not uh, uh, linked one uh, to another. So there is a very interesting saving in terms of energy, uh, which means also a longer power reserve. There is a, a big advantage in terms of uh, resistance to shock also. So reliability of the, the watch on the longer term and also precision of the tourbillon itself. Uh, and the fact that uh, the balance wheel can be bigger uh, which is very interesting because uh, uh, is more linked to the code of traditional watchmaking uh, and the codes of the uh, balance we developed here. Uh, and even into the Exotourbillon Slim, we have uh, a very nice balance wheel with 18 screws, uh, four of which in gold, exactly following the codes of uh, traditional watchmaking. It's powered by a micro rotor, something that's new for the brand. Correct. In effect, uh, here the, the step further is to get a slim uh, uh, version of it. The movement is four millimeter and a half uh, thick, which is a uh, very, uh, very slim uh, execution of it. And then, in effect, the, the challenge that our watchmaker had to solve was uh, uh, finding the proper virtuous balance between the dimension of the tourbillon itself. Uh, the dimension of uh, the micro rotor and the dimension of um, the barrel. Eh? So here is really finding the good. The, the point is really finding the good proportion and the good good balance between um, uh, these three different elements. And the good proportion is somewhere given by the performance of the movement itself. The fact that we have almost 50 hours of power reserve. Uh, which is uh, which is very good for the uh, for the dimension of the movement. The movement is 30 millimeter uh, diameter, so it's really 
a small and thin uh, movement. And there is a high velocity micro rotor in tungsten uh, uh, which gives a, a perfect firm performance to recharge uh, the movement itself. Because it's made of tungsten, it has enough, enough inertia to. Exactly, uh, absolutely. Power. Tungsten is. Uh, is a, um, uh, has a, a bigger density, so bigger weight than gold, and that's why we use this particular material. On top of the fact of uh, being very rigid, so giving good performances to recharge uh, with high velocity the, the movement itself. It's a very uh, interesting, eye-catching watch. Uh, um, a lot of technical content, uh, as you said, because of the uh, exoturbine and because of the chronograph to function together in a sport uh, watch. It wears quite s small on the wrist because of the very short locks. Correct, exactly. And, uh, and the shape, the design structure of this lux is very interesting because uh, it's uh, completely skeletonized. The material is uh, titanium, brushed titanium, so you get uh, a very interesting light appearance of the, of the case itself uh, and also uh, lightness uh, in the weight. So two uh, uh, characteristics that uh, provide a very good feeling when you wear the watch. On top of the fact that uh, uh, the case itself, uh, the, the central part of the case uh, is made of um, carbon with a particular mm -hmm. three-dimensional decoration of it. So at the end, uh, the watch is, is really very comfortable to wear and it provides somewhere the, the new look of, uh, of the Mont Blanc sport watches with the, um, these uh, uh, satin finish brush look with the matte uh, uh, finishing of the carbon itself uh, with the bezel uh, which is DLC treated to get again this, this black brush uh, aspect and with the red joint under the, uh, the glass which is, which is quite domed and which gives again a very nice uh, sporty ins playing with the black and red which are two typical color sport watches. Mm -hmm. And there's some, something extra that helps also for the precision. Absolutely. There is a stop second mechanism which is obtained by a whip which uh, can stop uh, instantly the, the tourbillon itself, mm -hmm. uh, just uh, um, blocking the balance wheel itself mm -hmm. uh, with a very delicate balance again to find because uh, it can touch the balance wheel in very different position. It can be on top of one of the screws, it can be in between two screws or it can be directly uh, on, the, on the balance wheel itself. So the force that is given to uh, to stop uh, the, um, the balance wheel has, has to be very precise and, and also when you restart it, uh, it, it stops when you pull the crown and when you push the crown it starts again. Uh, not only releases uh, the, the balance wheel itself but it also gives to the balance wheel a small hint uh, to restart it uh, the proper way. And because uh, you have a rotation of the cage uh, uh, in one minute uh, and you have a small red arrow reminiscent of, uh, of the Minerva arrow uh, that indicates the second, this allows you really, if you want to set it extremely precisely, to stop it at midday and then to restart and be having a, a watch which is absolutely precise.